Welcome back, candy men and women. I am going to start this live stream off with a warning. Uh, and this is not supposed to be to scare anybody. This is just supposed to be a small example to let you know, to help you understand why we're doing this episode. A lot of people that email, a lot of y'all email me, the ones who are actually in the process of starting up your businesses, your handyman businesses. A lot of you email me directly to ask me more detailed and thorough questions or even just to introduce yourself and ask for advice. And I've noticed something here, which is that a whole lot of y'all, when you're emailing me, the emails are starting to start off with the phrase, I recently got laid off from my software job. And now I'm starting a handyman business over and over getting laid off from software jobs. If you follow AI and just tech in general, but specifically what's going on with AI, it is it is growing by leaps and bounds. And for those of you who aren't familiar with exponential growth, that is something like two times two is four times two is eight times two is 16 times two is 32, et cetera, et cetera, and you go all the way up the binary code, and those numbers always start out kind of slow, but once they start picking up, they skyrocket. AI is an exponential growth curve sort of technology, and we've hit that vertical phase now. We're just right at that bend where, you know, the next doubling, it's here, and the next doubling, it's here, and then the next doubling, it's to the moon. I think there's a thing that's like, how many times do you have to fold a piece of paper? Let's get a piece of paper here. We're going to explain exponential tech, exponential growth. So this is just a piece of paper. And the question would be, how many times do you have to fold this to reach the moon? So you fold it once, and it's about as thick as a piece of paper. You fold it again. It's about as, it's a little thicker than a piece of paper. You fold it. Like, none of these are much different. Each time I fold these... They're not really very different, but every time you do this, you multiply times two and it turns out, and I honestly don't remember the exact number. Y'all can Google this, but it only takes something like 24 folds to reach the moon. So this many folds, this is like five folds right here, and it didn't get much bigger than a piece of paper, but give it just a few more, just enough more. And all of the sudden it goes from reaching halfway to the moon to reaching all the way to the moon to reaching further and further so this technology grows fast and we're at the we're at the curve that's just about to go vertical and that means a lot of things and one of the things like i said that i've noticed it means is a lot of software engineers have been contacting me uh, not to talk about ai of course to talk about handyman business but these emails keep starting off with i recently got laid off from my software job and i can't find another as another example there's a guy that was on our live streams last week that I'll be, I need to get back in touch with. So by the way, if you're watching James, I apologize. I've been insanely busy. I'm going to be getting back in touch with you. But this guy, James is, uh, he writes websites and stuff and he's very good at it. I've seen some of his work. He sent some of it to me. However, those types of jobs, it's not that they're all going away. Every time new technologies come along, we still find ways to turn those new technologies into even more jobs. But the days of needing software engineers, of needing so many of them, and website designers and all of that, they're going away very, very quickly to where you're not going to need 12 of them working in a company to accomplish the work that that company does. All of a sudden with AI two and a half or three of those people are going to be able to do the work of the 12. And then eventually one person is going to be able to do the work of the 12 and there's going to be new revenue models and things are going to get changed up. But what this means to you guys, all the regular handymen out there who are starting and growing their businesses is you might want to prepare yourself for a few things, which is what this episode is going to be over. But one of those things is prepare yourself for an influx of new people into our field because they're, Oddly enough, I know quite a few people in IT and in software, and one of the things I've noticed is I think because they're all so intelligent, they're also very good at doing their own handyman work. In fact, they enjoy, for example, ordering solar panels and inverters and battery banks and stuff and setting up their entire solar panel system on their phone or on their home. Uh, they enjoy fixing their own vehicles. They enjoy 
building sheds. They enjoy literally opening up the book and getting all the dimensions and figuring out how to do the rafters and building their own sheds. They're very thorough, intelligent people, and they're all going to be coming into our field, and it's not just them. Uh, another example we have right now is in Hollywood, there's a writers and actors strike. And I don't know all the details, but the gist of it seems to be that the, the actors and the writers are asking for guarantees that the studios are not going to essentially just really not going to use AI to replace any workers, which in my opinion is absurd because I'm going to use AI to replace services that I pay for from other people. Everybody is. When new technologies happen, there is no stopping them. AI is here. It's not going to go anywhere. And you're not going to stop it. The bet, What you need to be doing as a handyman or as any service industry business owner or software developer, it doesn't matter what you do. The thing we all need to be doing now is not being afraid, not trying to protect ourselves, not demanding that our bosses guarantee they won't replace us. What we need to do is figure out what AI can and cannot do right now and make sure that we're doing the things that it cannot do or that we're getting good at figuring how to utilize AI to do the things that it can do for us because it still, at this point, needs somebody to tell it what we want it to be doing. So don't be afraid of it. It's time to start understanding this technology because it's coming fast. And, and with you know the writers and the actors and stuff, they're wanting the guarantees that the studios won't use AI to replace them and at the same time, from what I understand, the studios are asking them to essentially agree to just show up and be scanned head to toe and get their voice on record enough to be able to duplicate their voice and essentially saying, let me just pay you for a day's work and your day's work will be showing up for the scans. And then we're going to make whatever we want with your likeness. And that's not good either. You know, neither of those are good options. They're both extremes. The thing that's going to happen is it's going to start taking jobs. It already has. It's going to start doing our jobs better than we do. But the upside to all of it, as, I, as I'm trying to point out a few times, the upside to all of this is if you decide to be the one who's not afraid of it and who actually studies it to figure out what it can and can't do, you're going to be the handyman that's utilizing AI. And I know that sounds silly because we're just handymen, but there are so many things it can do. So let me... Searching for any job nowadays. Yeah. So just so you all know, um, I don't know how many people are going to show up. I was going to make this into a just a regular video that I would post. The reason I made it a live stream is because I feel more relaxed on the live streams. And there's so much information here because I am a technology fan. I'm a science and technology fan. I just follow all of it incessantly. It's, a, it's an obsession of mine. And I don't know how to condense everything down into this nice, clean video. So what I want to do is I've got notes and I'm going to go through my notes as if I'm just filming an episode that's not a live stream. And then I'll come over and start looking at more of the questions so we can dive a little deeper on these things. But let's go over some of the things that AI is going to do that is going to affect you as a handyman business owner. Number one, it's going to be really good at connecting clients with service providers. So all of your clients, all of your homeowners, property managers, realtors, doesn't matter who, all these guys that are looking for people with skilled trades experience to do work for them, AI is going to do a really good job of connecting everybody because it's going to reach the point where when you want something done, you don't go to one of 15 different websites and sign up and enter all your info and then wait for a call or an email from a handyman. You're going to go to one place. You're going to go to maybe your own personal AI assistant, which in a year, I promise you all, you mark my words, in a year, everybody who wants one is going to have a personal assistant. And I don't mean an assistant where you say, hey, you know, write this task on a list for me so I can remember it later. I mean an assistant who can set appointments for you, order parts and materials for you, all kinds of stuff. You're going to have an assistant. <clears throat> and these people are going to be able to get connected up with handymen much, much, much more efficiently. It's going to connect you with clients more efficiently too. But the question from that becomes, does that mean our price comes down? If, if everybody's losing their jobs, if tons of people are suddenly finding themselves either without work or without enough work, when that starts happening, are we going to be in a position where because we're all connected 
to the homeowners so well via technology that our prices come down because we're all competing? Or are the prices going to go up? I just don't know. But one point is that it is going to connect clients and providers much better. Uh, right now, something I use it for is rewriting things. So when I'm writing, um, let's say I'm, I'm writing like a mass email. I don't use this for personal emails, but like a mass email that I'm going to send to seven property managers. Oftentimes what I'll do is I'll write the email and then I'll open up chat GPT and I'll just feed it to chat GPT and say, please just write this and make it more rewrite this and make it more professional if you can. And chat G GTP always improves upon whatever it was that I wrote. So your communications, uh, if you're starting a website, if you're making flyers, anything you're doing where you're typing out words for somebody else to read, run it through chat GPT and just see what it does with it. Cause most of the time it's going to make it better. And by the way, if you use chat GPT, you need to prompt it to tell it who it is. You don't have to, but if you do, it will do a better job. So you're, because you're a handyman, you can tell chat GPT, Hey, Pretend you're a handyman who is who's writing a brochure that he's going to send to relatively wealthy homeowners in the higher income area of town advertising this product. And then you write the email that you want to send them or the brochure that you want to send to them. But first you prompt and you say, pretend you're this and then rewrite this, please, as if you are that type of person. And it will write it from that perspective it will understand what it is you're trying to get at <clears throat> so communications ads marketing all of that you're going to sound better and so is everybody else so let's say let's say you and all the other handymen in your small town of a hundred thousand people you're all high school education level you're all articulate enough you get by just fine in society you didn't you didn't go do any fancy stuff with your language and neither did anybody else none of y'all sound stupid either but Three of you decide to start running everything through chat GPT. You don't email a property manager or a homeowner without first running it through chat GPT. Well, now all of a sudden, three of the handymen in your town sound super educated and super smart and super articulate. And the rest of y'all, you just sound normal, but you don't sound smart and articulate like the other guy. He's going to be your competition. Your goal is to become his competition, to grab that AI before everybody else does and use it to get your leg up <laughs> next scheduling. I'm excited about scheduling. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be able to have an AI scheduling a lot of my jobs in the future. And this all ties back into the assistant thing, but you can already have AI do so much. So, so, so much, especially if you have money, but even for free, you can, I'm very confident in a year. I'm going to be able to give the AI access to my jobber account and it's which has my scheduling on it and to my google calendar and any other calendar i have and it's going to know when i'm available when i'm not it's going to know a lot of my habits and routines and i'm going to be able to do something like have an ai notice when a new job comes in my email ask me if i want that job to be turned into a job within my jobber account and i can just answer verbally yes please go ahead and do that and then it might say, do you want me to schedule this job? And I can say, well, what part of town is it in? And it'll say it's on the northeast side of town. And I'll say, do I have a day where I'm going to be on the northeast side of town with at least an hour and a half opening that I can do that job? And it'll check and it'll figure it out. And at some point, it's going to be calling the tenant or texting the tenant itself and getting me scheduled. And guys, the time savings on that is insane. Imagine if it's literally as if you hired a professional college educated assistant who knows everything about everything on the internet, on computers, with software, speaks articulately, just understands the world around it. And you can just tell it what you need it to do. And it's the same as if you hired a full time employee to go do that for you. I'm not saying for sure in exactly one year it will be there. But my point with this video is this is an exponential growth curve. And you, if you don't understand what that is, what that is, is right now it's impressive. Next year, it's going to be mind blowing. And the year after that, we're not going to even be able to understand how the hell it could figure out half the stuff it figures out. It's going to be really good. And like I said, 
if I said it, I think I did at the beginning. Every major corporation and every nation on Earth right now is dumping every resource they have into AI. I'm pretty sure that's why my Google, man, when I'm navigating with Google right now, with Google Maps having to tell me how to get to where I'm going, it is doing such a horrible job compared to what it used to do. The speech to text doesn't hardly understand me anymore. And I think just my own little conspiracy theory, I guess, is that Google's putting every com compute resource that they have into AI. But yeah, and just imagine, so it's doing your scheduling and everything else for you. Let's say you're on the job and let's say your AI, you know, is literally just on your phone. So you're on the job and you go grab a valve stem for a shower, right? You can grab it and you can look at it and you can literally just talk to your phone. Maybe you get to name your AI and you say, hey, Duke, uh, how about, let's see, I'm using up one of these Price Feister valve stems. Can you go ahead and order me one more? And then it says, sure, I can do that. And then you go, actually, no, order me three more. I need a little bit more in my stock anyways. Give me three more of those. And you're done. You don't come home at the end of the day and get online and log into the place you order parts from and order it and have to track it. Your AI is doing all of it. It orders the part for you. It tracks it. It lets you know when it's going to show up tomorrow. It comes up with other questions to ask you about other stuff it might be doing. And I know to a lot of you, this sounds silly. And I know to a lot of you, this sounds like it makes absolute sense. And for those of you who think it sounds silly, I don't blame you. But you do need to look further into the technology, the way that it grows and the rate at which it grows. We are at a precipice and we need to be prepared for that. Next. Um, yeah, it's going to push a lot of people into the gig economy and not just by uh, people losing their jobs. A lot of times it may be that a lot of the people are going to be keeping their jobs, but they're going to be doing their jobs in a different format. They're no longer going to be a full time employee with an office to go to and benefits and stuff. I just think in general, because it's going to be so good, because it can do the work of four or five or six people with just one person controlling it, you're just going to have a lot of people entering this economy, and AI is going to be good at connecting people with gigs as well. So just be prepared for the idea that whether it's a year or two years, if you're planning this as like a lifetime business, and you're not watching this channel just for the purpose of putting some money in the bank this week, be prepared for the idea that our industry may get flooded because essentially AI is good at all. The, they thought in the beginning that the things AI could never do would be the creative jobs like art and music and stuff. And it turns out that's the first thing that it took just right away. And then the second thing would be the technical jobs. And guess what? That's the second thing it took right away. It can write an entire website, maybe not perfectly. And yes, it needs human guidance. But the point is, it can do most of that coding that other people would have had to spend days on just like that. So as people start losing jobs or losing hours at their jobs or losing gigs if they're already in the gig economy, and we're kind of in the gig economy. We're trying to get regular long-term clients, but it's still a gig economy for us. So just be prepared for it to get flooded. You need to be trying to be as close to the top as you can get before it gets flooded. And then finally, here's just a really bright side. I've done a little bit of video on this a while back, but I'm excited about it because along with AI comes Tesla's full self-driving. And say what you will, yes, Elon Musk promises the impossible. And instead of being impossible, it ends up being merely late. And yes, FSD is going to be late, but FSD is coming. It is if you follow people who are driving the latest versions of FSD right now, it's it's almost there, guys. It's already five times safer than a human. Right now, on the road, if you have FSD, the beta version that's out there, that's not full FSD yet. But if you have that, it's already safer than a human. And it's not going to be long at all before it is ten times safer than a human. And believe it or not, there's going to come a day when the question isn't, should we allow cars to drive themselves? The question is going to be, given that humans kill each other so often and AI driven cars never kill anybody, should we even allow human drivers anymore? And that'll be a weird day because I like driving and maybe they'll just geofence off parts of town where you have to turn on your FSD. But what I'm excited about is 
I have no time, guys. I'm always telling y'all I have no time. I got to run my business, and that is a full-time job. That is all-consuming for me already, just running the business. Now I'm doing the YouTube channel, which I absolutely love doing, and I, I want to just cut the business in half and put the other half into YouTube. It's just not financially feasible. However, with my limited time and the little bit of time I get with my family and everything else, I'm going to be getting most likely a cyber truck. Now there's a chance some of these other GM and Ford and these guys, I think they're all going to end up licensing FSD from Tesla because they, the data required to get there, they're seven years behind or they're five years behind. It doesn't matter. They're so far behind that they can't catch up. Tesla's cars will be driving the roads with no human input very, very soon. And the other guys are years and years away and they're probably going to license it. So maybe it could be like a Ford Lightning or whatever GM is calling their new electric truck, but I'm probably going to end up with a cyber truck. And what I'm excited about is when I finish a job, all I need to do is tell my cyber truck or maybe just my personal assistant on my phone maybe already knows and she can tell the cyber truck but i just tell the cyber truck where the next job is and for that 18 minute drive i'm not watching the road what i'm going to do is i'm going to have a laptop over here maybe a little desk set up on the passenger side and i'm going to turn and i'm going to invoice that job i just did and if a new job came in i'm going to get that put into my software or i'm just going to talk to my ai assistant and tell my assistant to take care of all that but either way, I'm going to start utilizing that time because I don't know about y'all, but I've timed my drive time and my mileage. I drive between 100, I drive between 80 and 125 miles per day. That's every day. And this is mostly city driving. So we're talking like 40 miles an hour average. So I'm spending a couple hours driving every day. I need less than a couple hours per day to write my estimates and my invoices and onboard the new jobs and answer emails and stuff. That's two hours a day or less. But I spend two hours a day driving. As soon as full self-driving happens, and if it means I have to get a cyber truck, which no, I don't think they're pretty, but they are the, the specs on them are the best specs for any electric pickup coming out as far as towing capacity, range, all of that. So I'm going to be doing all of my admin work on the road. The last bit of it, I'll be finishing up. It's usually a 30-minute drive home for me because I'm always way out in town somewhere, and I live out in the country. So I'm going to start getting all my admin work done because my car is going to be driving me. And then, like I said, it may not even hardly be me doing the admin work. It may be me talking to my AI assistant who is connected into my jobber account and having her do it, and she just asked me questions about how I want to invoice these things. And then, uh, let's see, let's go to some questions. I'm, I'm rambling on, which is kind of what I knew I was going to do and kind of what I planned on doing because it is a subject that's very near and dear to me, but I, I wanted to get through my list at the very least and come over here and see what's going on. Yeah, no, see, this is the great thing. So Kona Ryder says, is AI going to redo my bathroom? That's the great thing. No, it's not. Not anytime soon. <clears throat> I mean, someday. And someday could be five years. Someday could be 150 years or 1,000 years. I don't know when an AI robot is going to be capable of the fine manipulation skills and the contortion skills required to crawl up underneath cabinets with your channel locks and get up in there and try to get that rusty bolt off of the faucet. Uh, but it's not anytime soon. So all we need to worry about is not that AI is going to physically be doing the work we're doing. We just need to be prepared for the fact that it's going to change the way all businesses do business, including property managers, how they find handymen or how they pay handymen. If you're working for homeowners, it's going to change how homeowners find you, how homeowners deal with you. Maybe it'll change how they want to pay you. You just the point is, we don't know. It is so good at what it does that it's going to be better than us at everything at some point and we need to see what's coming down the pipeline and be prepared for it so that we're acting in advance to prepare for it rather than a reacting after ai happens to us uh del ray says just make sure to never become dependent on ai always be proficient in whatever it can do for you i agree with that completely you do it's like a calculator you know um 
Calculators are great. I use them all day, every day, but still quite frequently, I sit down with a piece of paper and I just do some math by hand because you don't ever want to be dependent, for that matter, on any technology at all. You know, any going to sound like a little conspiracy theorist or whatever, and I don't know what's going to happen. I don't have any like pet theory, but over the course of history, civilizations collapse. Empires get built and empires collapse and they get built and they collapse. And I don't think it takes a genius to look around right now and go, shit's looking a little weird and we might want to be ready to grow some vegetables, maybe have a good, reliable source of water that doesn't have to come from the city, some food stocked up, maybe some guns and ammo. That's just my opinion. I'm, I'm not super confident that my children are going to grow up in a world where things are as easy as they were for my generation. Oddly enough, my generation, we don't consider things to have been easy by any means. Uh, but easy meaning there's jobs, the electric company turns on your electric, you can afford your bill by working a job, everybody has a car, everybody has a fridge that keeps your food cold so it doesn't rot, everybody has water under pressure that just magically shows up in their toilet and their shower and their kitchen sink. So don't, yeah, don't rely on it so much that you don't know how to live without it. Uh, see, oh, Snow, cool, Snow did a super chat. Snow said a robotic model MJ Peter Pan 3000 touched me in a funny way, but he was not found guilty. That is hilarious. All right. Thank you, Snow. I appreciate that. Uh, Del Rey said, don't let it think for you too much. Otherwise, you'll stop being able to think for yourself. I also agree with that. However, do understand that it's going to be smarter than you. It's not just going to be smarter than you, it's going to be smarter than you and everyone you know. And it's not just going to be smarter than you and everyone you know, it's going to be smarter than all people put together. It's going to be smarter at some point, I'm not saying next year, but the way these technologies happen and the way they grow, once that compute is there, once that once that line goes vertical, which it's it's this close to that vertical, it needs like one or two more doublings. Once you hit that point, it hits the point that it can improve upon itself. And when it hits that point, especially, they call it the singularity. I'm not going to get into like, I'm not into all of that. I don't really care everybody's little pet theories about what we call it and how exactly it's going to go down. But understand that when we talk about something being more intelligent than a person, it's, it's the difference between us and an ape. Like, apes are not smart compared to us. They do zero math. They do zero calculus, zero physics. They do not talk about philosophy. They do not make plans for what they would like to be doing in 50 years or in 10 years or five years or even next week. They don't have that concept. They're almost nothing compared to us, intelligence-wise. What we are creating, what we have created, and what is about to become is that much smarter than us. We're not going to understand it. It's going to be that smart. So uh, yes, think for yourself, but also understand that if your AI disagrees with you, it might be because it's a big conspiracy and the corporation's trying to control you or it's the government or whatever. You can have your own theories. But regardless of what your theory is, it's going to be smarter than you. It's going to be smarter than me. It's going to be smarter than the top 100 smartest people in the world, all put together in the same room, melded into the same brain. It's not something we can comprehend when it becomes that. It's not that yet. But the point is understand that it's coming and understand that you need to learn to utilize this tool so that you can harness it and make your business better and make more money rather than being surprised by it and kind of being on the sidelines while everyone else, or at least the five guys who did figure it out, they used it and now they're excelling and you're over here going, I don't want to listen to the AI because I want to think for myself. And you should think for yourself, but you should be conversing with the AI. You should be uh, taking advice from it if and when it reaches the point. It's not there yet. I mean, it's definitely not. You know, I asked chat GPT, to help me come up with ideas for uh, handyman YouTube episodes. And it's it gave me like stupid generic ideas that have already been done. 
uh, I came up with my own ideas for episodes and I said, can you help me write the episode and give me like a layout for it, like a template for the order I'm going to talk about things in? Exact same thing again. It just gave me a bunch of generic stuff. It's not as good as us yet, but be prepared for the fact that what looks like this incremental increase in intelligence is about to do that. Next. Andy Man Mark said, people are going to stop thinking for themselves. I see, you don't, I disagree. I don't think you ever have to stop thinking for yourself. I think that what you do is you start, like, for example, I didn't stop thinking for myself when I watched a bunch of handymen on YouTube and listened to their advice about how to run a handyman business. There weren't enough of them and the advice wasn't good enough, which is why I started this channel because there was so much I figured out on my own that I wished somebody had had available for me. But at the same time, um, oh, where was I going? Oh, yeah, thinking for yourself. So listening to their advice was not me not thinking for myself. It was the fact that the way I think for myself is to find the information I need. And there's coming a point very soon where the information you need is going to be contained within that AI. It's going, you'll be able to ask an AI someday, like, hey, what service could I offer to people who are in this part of my town that's kind of out in the country? What kind of service could I offer them that lots and lots of them could all have done on the same day on a weekend that I can discount? And it's, eventually it's going to be at a point where it's advice for what those people want, what those people need, what they're willing to pay combined with what your skills and resources are is going to be a better answer than you'll come up with on your own. And you'll just be out here kind of stumbling around trying to figure things out while other people are getting the best information from the best sources. And again, I want to be super clear. I don't think anybody, if anybody thinks I've said, stop thinking for yourself, that is not what I'm saying. What I am saying is thinking for yourself means understanding the reality around you and adapting to it. Uh, handyman, let's see. Kona Rider said, looking forward to nobody driving anymore. Yeah, me too, because uh, I, I don't like everybody dying and getting hit. <clears throat> handyman Mark said, don't miss a payment. It will repossess itself. It probably will, man. Like the electric vehicles, especially the smart ones like the Teslas, if they need to repo, you know, I guess they, I mean, even if it doesn't drive itself back to the factory, it can still just lock you out or it can drive itself to like a secured parking lot where somebody's going to come pick it up later. That's going to absolutely be a thing. Timothy Beatty said, I work as an insurance broker as my main job. I started a side hustle doing finished carpentry and hand handyman work last year. The insurance agent will probably be obsolete in five years. See, Timothy understands, and that's true because, see, insurance is a data-driven job. Anything that's done on the computer that's mostly data processing and data-driven, again, it's not that there will be no insurance brokers, but the idea is going to be that, you know, hopefully, Timothy, if you learn as an insurance broker, if you learn how to use AI better than all the other insurance brokers, if the other ones are sitting down going, I'm sticking to my guns and I'm doing it the way that I know it's best done and they don't change anything, Timothy, you need to be the guy who goes, okay, what can AI do for me to improve my ratio of success with sales and stuff so that suddenly as the other guys one by one are popping out of business, you're taking what's left of their clients until eventually someday of course, perhaps you're not needed anymore. And someday I'm not needed. Someday, even with YouTube channels, dude, I've been watching a lot of YouTube uh, uh, videos that are completely made by AI, where it's written by an AI, the voice is done by an AI, the video, the actual video that you're watching, the content, the media is created by an AI. It's all AI beginning to end, and it's good. In fact, an example I want to give is with this channel, once I move into my new studio that I'm going to be building. And once I do the master class, which is probably going to take like a year where I'm going to redo basically my whole history of videos, but put into these very perfect like chunks to guide somebody from step zero all the way through running their handyman business. When I finish that, I want to make 365 how to videos. It will cover everything we do as handyman, every single individual task that we perform on these rental houses I want to do a video for and a very high quality video from multiple angles, great audio, great lighting, great explanations. I want to buy a cabinet 
and literally with a jigsaw cut it away, like do a cutaway in real life so you can see like the garbage disposal I'm working on. So you can see the backside as I'm installing it. But I also am very aware that probably the master class is going to take a year minimum, maybe a year and a half. The how to videos are going to take a year, year and a half. By the time that's done, AI for sure is going to be able to make better videos than me of the same things that I did. In fact, it will probably learn from my videos. And it'll create a 3D virtual that you can flip upside down and inside out, make the cabinet translucent so you can see it, but you can still see through it, have little things popping up here. And it'll be able to do a perfect job of something that I did a 90% job on. My plan is to be the guy when I finish those videos, my very next step is going to be assuming I have some success by that point and I can afford to. My next step is going to be to round up people who understand AI and videos and everything else and put together a team to then redo all of my 365 videos with AI. So in other words, instead of somebody else harnessing an AI that's going to make better content than me, I'm going to harness the AI to make better content than me. That's the idea. Uh, Corcoran Sullivan said, I agree. Crazy, stressful times seem to be coming up. I also agree. I don't think they'll have machines to repair houses, especially old ones, really ever. Yeah, I mean, I, I won't say ever, but that's like a philosophical thing, because ever for me means even in 10 million years. So I assume there's going to come a day when that's happening. Could it be during my lifetime? Probably not during my working lifetime. Someday, though, I assume. But I feel safe. Like I feel like I'm in a very safe career field. Same with when I was working on jets, on business jets. If you've crawled in the belly of a plane and run wires behind a bunch of avionics boxes, if you've done modifications to wiring on airplanes, you, you know once you've been in that field, there is no robot that's going to replace you anytime soon. Now, maybe some Wi-Fi technology might replace you, but... No robot is going to get in the belly of that plane and run those wires. It's it's not possible because it's not possible for me to do it. I did the impossible every day. I don't know how. I just somehow managed to get these wires magically where they needed to be, and it shouldn't have been possible. AI is not going to take that. AI is not going to change out rusty, old, nasty faucets. AI is not going to go up to a hose bib, a hose bib on the side of like a stucco, like a brick and stucco house where there's zero pipe sticking out and you have to desolder it and the pipes all corrode. AI is not going to go figure that out anytime soon. I, I will be very old and on my deathbed probably before AI can pull that one off, luckily. So I think we're safe there. I just want us all to be prepared for the fact that those of us who figure out how to harness it, who, who understand it, figure out what it can do for us <clears throat> and our businesses, we will be the survivors. We will be the ones whose businesses stay open and keep working. It may end up helping me and you find other people to do work for us. We may end up just managing like a manager. We may end up just managing by talking to an AI and talking to people and just sort of being the coordinator of everything that's happening because there's going to be so many people looking for work. And I mean, they're going to have to do universal basic income or something. And I'm not even a fan for sure of ever giving anybody free money but at the same time if and when ai can do half of the jobs that are getting done out there what do you do when there's just literally not a job when there's nothing that you're capable of doing that you have a skill for that anybody is willing to give you any money for because ai can do it cheaper or damn near for free so it's gonna be crazy 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 what do we have next uh, Hatley Reviews said, good morning, sir. Good morning to you, too, sir. It's good to see you here. Snow said, Elon Musk changed Twitter to X and soon the net sphere into cybernet securities, thus Terminator. Only this time, it's real rated R. You never know, man. You just never... It's either It's either going to make everything better or it's going to make everything worse. I don't see a situation where life goes on as normal with all of this AI happening along with, you know, Russia's doing its bullshit and we're doing our own bullshit with Russia. Like, it's not like we're blameless either. 
So the whole world is going crazy. Um, our president has Alzheimer's. So does, I think, the what the Speaker of the House or whoever he was, McConnell, just shut down for like 18 seconds the other day. Just saw a video where Dianne Feinstein had to be told by her aides to just say I. They were voting, and they're like, just say I. Just say I. And she's like, what? Say, say, oh, okay. I. There aren't uh, educated, intelligent, well-meaning people running our country or any country anymore. There are some. I'm not saying there's none. But generally speaking, uh, it seems like we're in a simulation because it's never been so interesting. Like, if I was going to run a simulation, I, I would be throwing aliens are real now. So, you know, I'm sure you all have all heard that. Aliens are real. Um, that's not exactly what I got out of those hearings. I did not get exactly that. But nonetheless, shit's crazy. And we all need to be looking out and just be prepared for literally anything that comes down the pipeline. Let's see. Audio is 10 times better. Thank you, Hatley. I appreciate it, sir. I put some work into it. One of y'all emailed me, and I wish I could remember who it was. I'm going to eventually go find it and reply thank you. I was just driving down the road reading the email, and one of y'all who's helped me out before actually emailed me and said, hey, man, I think you might need to go into your system settings and mute the microphone for your webcam. So I did that. And it worked. And then I also found out while I was in my system settings that not only was that microphone on and giving me some crap audio, but my headphones, this little mic here, was also picking up some audio. So I had to go in into the system settings and literally disable the microphone for both of those. But I'm, I'm so glad my audio is better, man. It's just been the most embarrassing, frustrating thing to just not be able to get. You would think it'd be so simple. And it just hasn't been. So thanks for the compliment. I appreciate it. I've, I've worked hard on the audio problem. This microphone right here was like 169 bucks, and I thought it didn't work at first, and it turns out it does. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Corcoran Sullivan said, the main effect for guys like us will be a bunch more competition from out-of-work office workers. That is exactly correct. There's going to be a lot of people. Two things are going to happen simultaneously. Lots of people out of work looking for handyman work or any kind of gig they can find. And two, lots of software run and created by AI that's going to be very good at recognizing all these new people, figuring out their skill sets, organizing them, classifying them, getting them all onto centralized platforms and making sure. I think what's going to happen is the work is going to be doled out to a lot more people. So in other, in other words, the demand is going to stay the same, but the supply of handymen is going to go up. And when the supply of handymen goes up, the value of handymen goes down. So we need to be keeping our value up by being on the ball, on the money, getting the jobs, getting the clients. Because in the end, if you're going into someone's home, regardless of an AI or what it thinks, in the end, if you can get people, whether it's property managers, realtors, or homeowners, to trust you enough that they want you to be the one working on their homes, even if your prices have to come down slightly, which if they do, then that would be because everybody's prices for everything is coming down. So they'll come down in relation to everything else. But even if your prices have to come down slightly because of a little more competition, the point is use the time you have available now to make the best impressions you can, to run the best business you can, and to get your foot in the door everywhere you can get it so that if and when this does accelerate, which I think it's going to. Like I said, I'm getting a lot of emails from people who said, I just lost my software job and now I'm a handyman because nobody, literally nobody is hiring. The only software <clears throat> jobs they're hiring for are people who are going to help create an AI or run an AI that's going to replace all the other software guys. So let's see, uh, competition from out of work, office workers, correct? Michael Johnson said AI would be great for asking code questions and code requirements. See, there you go. By the way, anybody watching this, um, especially like after we're done, if you're watching this a month later, I don't usually ask y'all to tell me things in the comments because I feel like I see that all the time on YouTube where people say, what do you think about this? Tell me in the comments. And we kind of all know 
they're just trying to get more comments, you know, so the video will get pushed by the algorithm. I like to treat y'all like you're intelligent. So I don't ask you, I might ask you directly and say, this will benefit me. Please comment, please like, please share. But I don't try to come up with silly ideas, be like, oh, what do you think, A or B? On this specific video, however, I think this is a very good place in the comments when you can think of ways that we can all utilize AI or when you can think of ways that AI is going to threaten us or harm us or make our jobs harder or bring less money into our pockets. So positive or negative, doesn't matter. If you've got some ideas on the subject that we can all be on the lookout floor for, Please do, this time on this video, please do use the comments as a place to post all of that and discuss all of that, because I'm making this video for a reason, and it's again, it's not out of fear. I'm very confident. For example, I've been using Jobber now for two and a half years, almost coming up on three years, not quite, but like more than two and a half years. Every job I've ever done, I don't do work under the table for cash, ever. Every single job I've ever done has been documented in Jobber and is all available in a CSV file. And I can, I haven't yet, but I can upload that right now to ChatGPT and ask it to analyze that CSV file and to just give me patterns that it found. And it will just tell me things if and when I come around to doing that, when I get that kind of spare time, it will tell me patterns it's noticed. Uh, you know, medical care. When you can feed it enough medical records of enough people, maybe along with their social media sites and their diet and who knows whatever else, people would need to consent to all of this, of course. But my point is medical care is going to be out of doctor's hands at some point. There's going to be a point where an AI is going to look at things and go, I think we should test for this and this. And the doctor is going to go, I think we should test for this. Well, you know who's right is the AI. And the reason the AI is right 99% of the time is because it's not emotionally invested. It has no prior history. It doesn't have an antidote of breast cancer. So now it's super aware of breast cancer. It's just an information processing intelligence unit. And it's going to process information. So I've got a bunch of information just in my jobber account that when I find the time, I'm going to be able to feed into AI and query it and just say, hey, is there a certain type of client that seems to be the best client for me? What's my most profitable jobs? Uh, what what ways of scheduling have I done in the past that seem to work better and result in more income for that week than other ways that I was scheduling? And on and on and on and on. It's just an information processor and it will find those patterns. So yeah, asking questions and code requirements is perfect. You could probably, in fact, I would bet there's going to come a point, maybe this is three to five years down the line, where instead of looking for a YouTube video that somebody already made about how to do something, instead you can ask your AI to show you a video and it will just, it will be generating the video specifically for you, knowing your preferences, knowing your vision, knowing how well you can or can't read, whether it puts lots of words in there, knowing so much about you and your preferences. And it will just make a video and tell you and show you step by step how to change a garbage disposal. And you don't have to go look for a video. Your AI will just generate it live for you. Just an idea. I'm not saying it will. What I'm saying is be prepared to be figuring out all of the ways in which it's going to change your life. Let's see. Snow said, I'm just blowing off steam from the crazy heat we had, and I had some customers buy large bodies of water. It's, it's choking humid. It's sad that I'm so used to it, plus trying to fix my car in a parking lot. Dude, That's it's hot in Tucson, man. It's like 110 every day, and it's horrible. Like, it's really... It's absolutely horrible here. I'm getting angry every morning, like actual internal anger that I have to go out in this heat again. And I'm just so sick of it because I got no AC either in my truck or my van. Snow said, I'm not worried about it at all. They can barely get a good jack of all trades with fair prices. It's why I drive an older car that's easy to fix. No technology replaces what my clients want. Yep, I agree. Corcoran said, uh-oh, oh, is the audio going choppy? I swear to God. Am I still plugged in right? I swear to God. These audio problems are never going to go away. If anybody's here right now at the very bottom, let me know if my audio is good. I'm going to get real angry 
if my audio is not solved after solving it and then solving it again and solving it again. It's getting hot in here. I actually got the fan off just so that the air from the fan doesn't affect the microphone and the audio. Yeah, Corcoran said, haven't heard the last two minutes of what you said. Hatley said, been there, done that. That's why it's cool having an a &P. Always a plan B, and we live well below our means, so it's all good. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's the good thing about aviation. I've told a lot of people uh, not to go into aviation if they want a good quality of life in terms of like hours you work and whether you're working graveyards and all that, because aviation can take away some quality of life. However, you're a young man with a baby on the way. If you can get into aviation, among other job fields as well, but aviation is definitely one where once you get that certification, and I was avionics, I didn't even, I don't have an AMP, not required for avionics ever. So for me, whether the AMP or not, any of us who can work planes and who are good at it can go anywhere in the entire world. China, Australia, Russia, doesn't matter. Germany, Canada, Mexico, anywhere you want to go, You've got a job working planes and making good money. Okay, everybody's saying they can hear me fine right now, so that's good. Y'all do let me know, like, fast, please, if the audio starts going. All right, Stephen Truckee said, I really appreciate the humble content, man, and you were such a great influence. I've been so sick of being a union electrician, but your videos have pushed me into starting my own business. Much love. Thank you, sir. That's what I'm here for. I really... I get excited at the idea of helping men, women too, but it's mostly men that are on here. And I get, I just love the idea of helping men break free from that because I can't stand the employer employee relationship. It's necessary for so many industries and it's necessary for most people. You know, I've had like 16 different guys over the last two and a half years of running this business. I've had like 16 different guys, always young men in their 20s who say, hey, man, I'm pretty handy. If you ever need a hand, you know, like on some of your work, if you want to hire me, I'll come work for you. And every time, and I'm not kidding you guys, 16 or more of these, every single time I get excited and I say, hey, let me tell you something. All you need to do is go get your business license and that's it. Just get your business license. I, I want you to be your own business. But once you get your business license, which is insanely easy to do, Go get a business license, make up your business name or whatever, get a business checking account. And not only will I hire you, but you'll make at least more than $50 an hour. I don't care what you do or don't know. I can teach you enough things in a day to be able to have enough jobs to send you on that you can at least go make $50 an hour doing like one job a day or maybe two jobs a day until you get better and I can get more work for you. But you just need, I need you to be independent. I don't want an employee. I don't want to pay workman's comp. I don't want to worry about unemployment insurance. I want individual, independent minded, capable men who are happy for me to say, here's the job and you take care of it. And I trust you to take care of it. And when you get it done, you send me pictures and I pay you. And you make, instead of me hiring you by the hour for $16 an hour, and then paying all these other fees to the government for me to hire you. Why don't you be independent? And I'll send you as much as I can. But you can also go get your own property managers or your own homeowners. Or just walk down the road with a backpack full of fill valves for toilets. And knock on doors and ask people if their toilets run. And if it is, you can fix it for 50 bucks. I want people to be independent. I don't want people working for me. I want them working for themselves and happy to take some of my work while they also take somebody else's work, while they also find some of their own work. So that's what I'm here for, and I'm glad that my channel has been helpful because I I really just love the idea of getting everybody free, just getting men to finally be free to go truly. I think the way I feel, guys, I mean, for me, it's night and day. When I was working aviation, I was dead inside. Like I had no soul, no spirit, no drive, no motivation. There were times, I swear to God, there were times when I worked at Bombardier where like one of my buddies would call me at seven o'clock in the evening because I worked like 6.30 p.m. to 7 a.m. Or they'd call me at, you know, 11 o'clock at night. Didn't matter. I'd get a phone call while I'm on shift in the middle of the night and I'd walk outside just to take a quick five minute phone call. Two and a half, three hours later, I'm still walking around on the phone because I didn't care. You know, it was too hard 
to care. It didn't matter. I was so good at what I was doing. Like I was so experienced at running wires that I could do the work of two or three like new guys or two or three lazy average guys. I would do the work of two or three of them in one night. So if on a particular Wednesday, I just really felt like being on the phone for two and a half hours, in my opinion, it was like, you know what? Nobody cares. Doesn't matter. Day shift ain't going to get nothing done on this anyways. The money's just stupid. I'm not going to get paid more either way. And I've done my fair share and they're still going to make a profit on me. So as long as they're making a profit on me, I'm not super motivated at all. I had no soul, no spirit, no motivation. I was not somebody that I was, I wasn't proud to be who I was because I didn't feel like there was anything to me. I didn't feel like I specifically was doing something with my time during the day. I was doing something for somebody else with my time. When you're doing it for you and it's your baby and it's your business, yeah, it consumes your whole life. You're busy with it morning to night, seven days a week. So no, you don't get those weekends. Or you don't get to just clock out at five and forget about it all. You lose that. But what you gain is a sense of purpose and a drive and a sense of meaning and something that you wake up in the morning and your brain doesn't go, God, I got to go to work today. Your brain goes, all right, next, next. Got to keep this moving. Got to keep this truck. And this is what I'm doing. And it just, it puts you in a zone and it's a zone that feels good. So I like these hats, by the way, because the, the good ones anyways have a leather band. That's what all the staining is from right here is they have a leather band inside here and the leather band will soak up all your sweat and that keeps your face dry for a little bit. But then when you start getting all hot and you need to take it off just to let your head breathe, which it, it breathes pretty well, but when you need to let your head breathe and you take it off, that band gets super cold. So when you go put it back on, it feels real nice. All right, let's see, where was I at? Hatley said McConnell had a control alt delete. He did, man. He did. He every it's so stupid. I feel like it's so obvious right now. Like I feel like we're all watching um people who aren't capable of running our country run our country and we're just because we're tribal because all of the republicans are going to take whoever the republican is that just did something insane and they're going to make excuses for him when they know it's wrong. And then the Democrat next door is going to watch the Democrat do the thing that's insane and then make excuses for him. And we've all become so tribal that we're not willing to call out our own people who are on our side. We're not willing to call them out on their mistakes because we're afraid that by calling them out, we've admitted somebody on our side made a mistake and maybe we'll lose. When what's actually happening is we're all losing because nobody's calling anything out in this system that we're almost not a part of anymore it's just running itself, and it's running itself into insanity. Del Rey said, I agree. Become proficient in using AI and keep up with its developments, especially with regard to how it can improve your life in particular. Just keep God first and second. Yeah, I don't disagree. Um, I'm not religious. I'm actually atheist and not like some sort of, uh, I don't preach atheism. I just, I have a lack of of any particular belief system as opposed to a belief system that says other particular things don't or can't exist. I just don't adhere to any particular belief system. However, I will say keep the moral values that are taught by many religions close at hand, because the truth is most of what I believe and preach about right and wrong, like in my own personal life, you can find it also in the Bible. I just didn't get it from there. Uh, Michael Johnson said, audio is very high quality compared to your last live stream. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. One of y'all helped me out and told me what I needed to do, and I did it, and it seems to have worked so far. There's still improvements to be made. I do want, I'm weird, I want perfect audio eventually, and I mean perfect audio. But you know what? I'll take an 87 out of 100. Pittsburgh Toddy 86 said, AI literally scares the crap out of me. Some people actually have romantic relationships with AI bots. It's bizarre to me. Yeah, I don't, I mean, uh, that's definitely not a good thing. I would tend to want to ask the question, um, you know, what's, what's wrong with them? Not like in a, their creepy way, but uh, if there was trauma in their past that led them to that. And some people are just creepy, but, uh, you know, 
a lot of people are scared. A lot of people are alone. A lot of people are unsure. Our, our, our society in terms of how we promote how men and women should deal with each other and be with each other and pursue each other, et cetera, et cetera, is getting very broken down. And I think most of the country right now, I'm extremely lucky. I finally found the one. And I, I met her very late in life. I was 37 when I found the one. There were many others before her that I had to let go because I knew that they wouldn't make good wives and or good mothers. But I found the one. However, uh, a lot of guys, and if, if you're below the age of 30, assuming you want to date within your age range, I feel like a lot of guys out there right now are in a position where there are no good options. I don't see, I don't see your generation of women being overall good women to date and marry. And I don't mean there aren't any, there are tons. Like I, I know there's a feed store right down the road from me. It seems like every girl I see in that feed store that comes from a farm or a ranch is the kind of girl that I would want my kids marrying. Um, but y'all don't have a lot of good options right now. We've, we've, and when I say we, I think I mean my generation and perhaps the millennials right beneath me. I think we have allowed a little bit too much straying from what took thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of years of evolution, of cultural evolution to come up with systems that can hold a society together. And I think we just, we let it, you know, it started with little things that were good things, but I think a lot of it's gone so far that we don't remember that we're animals and we're biologically wired, genetically created, whether by a creator or not, to want certain things, to need certain things, to feel certain ways in response to certain things. And it's not within our control to just change who we are. And I think we've changed what we expect everybody else to be. And therefore, they're trying to be that and it's not working. So, yeah, I definitely don't think it's good for young men or women, I guess. But I bet it's mostly men to have a relationship with an AI. But at the same time, I understand that if you're lonely and if there's no one, if every woman you know is just trying to get laid by the top tier man, that all the other women are all going to that same man and none of them are paying attention to anybody in the middle and you have nobody and nothing. I don't know what you do at that point other than, you know, become that top tier man. But the point is that top tier man, he's not a top tier man. He has the image and the appearance of a top tier man, but that's not what he is. So I'm not going to judge people, but yes, it's, it's definitely not healthy. And I would hope that uh, my children and any other young boys that I know and love would not go the path of getting in a relationship with an AI. This is going weird. This is a weird, weird audio stream but it's a good time in bell. I haven't seen you in here before, sir. I've heard everything, sir. Oh, good. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Trevor Simmons. I'm hearing you fine. Thank you, sir. Michael Johnson. Audio is still good. The live stream lagged for several seconds. There have been server issues across the country. Also, there's a storm right now here at my house. I could just disappear any moment because the lightning could strike. We've lost power a few times here over the last week. In Bell said, uh, I'm into AI and was watching an MIT video. My husband is a handyman. Then this live popped up. We never thought these two worlds could collide. This is an amazing revelation. Yeah, that's the thing is it's going to collide with every world. Every, I swear to God, I just, I don't know. I don't want to seem like uh, the sky is falling kind of person because it's, I don't think it's a negative thing, or at least it doesn't have to be. But I feel like everyone is walking around thinking that AI is now creating really neat images. By the way, if y'all saw the thumbnail for this, that's an AI generated thumbnail. I, I took the liberty today of having an AI generate. So I put the text in it, but the picture of the robot, that's an AI. I went to like five different AI image generation sites, played with all of them, played with my prompting, went back to each of them with new prompting until finally that's when I came up with just to show I could never be capable of making that. And three years ago, just three, three years ago, maybe even two, but three years ago, you would have to pay somebody a lot of money, like a lot. There were people whose entire careers were making images like that for corporations and for brands and for marketing organizations. 
and now they're not necessary. By the way, my logo, my Bulletproof Handyman logo, all of the different Bulletproof Handyman logos you've seen, all of those, AI generated. I used AI logo generation websites, paid about 100 bucks for each one, and got it done in about an hour for each one, like to an exquisite level of detail that was perfect for me. And then got transparent ones, PNG file, all, all the different file types, all the different sizes, with like three different branded color schemes, everything. It's insane what it's doing, and it's going to replace so many people, and that's okay. I mean, I'd be scared if I was in certain fields, but I wouldn't just sit around being scared. I would get scared, and then I would go, okay, what am I doing? Either how do I use AI to be better at what I'm doing, to be the guy that utilizes the AI and still gets the paycheck, or if I'm going to be the guy that exits the field, wh where do I go enter into next? But yeah, I love watching MIT videos too. I was just watching, oh, what was his name? Eric Weinstein loves the guy. He's one of the smartest physicists in the world, and I can't rem remember his name. But anyways, I just watched, apparently, uh, what I hadn't seen from him was one of his literally like physics 101, like introduction to physics day one of these guys' first day in their first physics class attending MIT. It was a really cool video. Uh, Chuck, what's up, Chuck? How are you doing, sir? Chuck said hello, hello. Good to see you in here. Uh, the Bean Patch said hello from Missouri. Hello, Bean Patch. Uh, we got Jobber on your link. Love it for the most part. Yeah, e uh, email me. I mean, or ask me here. I'm not going to make this a Jobber video because I wanted this to be just an AI video. Uh, I will be doing a Jobber video, but it won't be a live stream. So if you need any help with Jobber, right away, email me. I have this long list of guys. I have this long list of videos that I need to make, that I want to make, that I'm planning on making, and that I know you need. Some of them are Jobber videos because those of y'all who are getting Jobber, a lot of times you're emailing me asking me how to use a certain function or how to make something work a certain way. Because the way I use Jobber is not even always the way Jobber is intended to be used. I, I found a lot of alternative uses for features they have. So, uh, Bean Patch, email me, bulletproofhandymanbusiness at gmail.com. Email me whatever it is you might be having any issues with. And I will either tell you the solution if I already know it, because I use it incessantly. I've, I've dove deep into Jobber. I use literally almost every feature and function they have. Um, and I can probably help you. And if I can't, then I can get in touch with some people at Jobber. Or, for example, if it's just a feature that they're missing or that it seems to be missing, I can find out from them for you if they can either work on creating that feature or if perhaps it does exist. It's just not where you would think it would be or it doesn't. You don't use it the way you would think you would use it. So uh, bulletproofhandymanbusiness at gmail.com. Shoot me that email, and I will reply to give you some help with whatever's not working right. Chuck said, oh, wait. The Bean Patch said, don't AI will take over our work anytime soon. Yeah, I think you meant don't think AI will take over our work anytime soon. I agree. I think most people on here do. Just the, to, to design the machines, you know, forget the AI, just to design the machines that would be capable of articulating their limbs and some of the contortions that we have to articulate ours in is just, it's not happening soon. You know, it just ain't. Chuck said, for a full move out slash clean out in a rental, what are your steps? Not going to get into that. That is too big of a subject here, Chuck. I do have a move out playlist, how to do move outs. I have a move out playlist. It has a part one, which is like inspection and a part two, which I think is the creating the estimate for it. I don't think I've done the part three, which is going to be doing the work. Um, I will give you a very short answer for the work portion. If you've watched what I've done and now you're to the work portion. When I show up to a move out, I do a few things. I try to bring everything I need and I'm not going to get deep into this, but I try to bring everything I know I'm going to need and whatever things I think I might need. And I show up and I literally start at the first item on my list. I don't jump around. I force myself to go to the first item on the list with the exception of like if there's a drywall patch and I know I need to get that started so the mud can be drying. But other than things where like I need epoxies or mud 
to be setting for some period of time. I start at the top of the list and I accomplish every task to the extent that it can be accomplished until I reach a stopping point. So say task number three, I can't finish because there's some particular part that I need from Home Depot. So I get all the way up to the point where that's all I need is that one part. And then I make my shopping list and I make sure to say I need that part. And that should never happen. I should have already had it if I did my job well beforehand. But since I didn't, now I need that part. And I go down that list until the only thing left is buying stuff. Don't figure out that you need a valve stem. Go get your valve stem, come back, start the work, and then find out 10 minutes later, now you need a bathroom supply line for the faucet that you put in the bathroom. Don't do that. Do every single job you can to the extent that it can be done until the only thing holding you back is missing materials, and then go get all your materials and finish the job. I will tell you that much. And I've tried other methods, and that's the one that when I started doing that one, that's when things went the smoothest and the best for me. Otherwise, it was back and forth, and it just didn't work well. The Bean Patch says, does Jobber always charge you to get your payments through them? I'm not going to give them 3% if I don't have to. Let me check something. Yeah, I think it's like 2 point something percent. That's just the way that the system works, whether it's through Jobber or through, I'm sure like Square maybe charges less. There's going to be payment providers all over, payment processors that you can go through everywhere. Uh, if you don't want to have people pay through Jobber, you definitely don't need to. My payments are all direct deposit for the most part. It's very rare. However, I do let payments go through Jobber because let's say I have a situation where I need to send. A, so everything was approved through the property manager. But when it's done, the homeowner is going to personally be the one paying the invoice. For me, if it's an $800 job. And it's 3% of that $800 job. So 3% of 100 is $3. 3% of 800 would be $30. So now the question becomes, is that $30 worth it? And for a beautiful, professional quote, and then uh, approved it electronically through the software and then pays it securely through the software, the fact that it costs me $30, it doesn't bother me a lot because for $30, I just acquired a lifetime client because now that homeowner is very likely going to be very happy, not just with my work, but with the entire experience that he had with me. So I bought him, I bought a client. And if you look at customer acquisition cost, say go watch Shark Tank or watch a bunch of YouTube videos on investing in small businesses or investing in businesses in general, one of the numbers you want to know is customer acquisition cost. Customer acquisition cost should be a percentage of the value of the customer. So if the customer is worth $10,000 a year, then an acquisition cost of X amount is going to be a good customer acquisition cost for that 10,000 a year. So for me, that $30 that Jobber takes out of that $900, $800, $900 job, whatever it is, that $30 for me is really meaningless in the long run because I made all that money in one day. I gained a valuable customer. I put money in the bank, but more than anything else, I continued to be the professional. I continued to be the guy who had the software, who came off as a business, who sounded like a business, felt like a business, and I'm now the only guy that guy wants working on his house anymore. So the $30 for me is just a very affordable customer acquisition cost. And that's also why, you know, I, I don't have to pay for Jobber now because I'm a brand ambassador, but up until they offered me that brand ambassadorship, <clears throat> until they sponsored this channel, <coughs> excuse me, guys, I was paying way more than y'all are paying because I got into Jobber a while back. So I didn't get any like, by the way, today's the day, today's the last day, 40% off for the next three months. I don't know what or when the next sale will be. I know there will be one. I'm not saying you need to hurry, but if you're in a trial and you need to get that closed out and purchased, that 40% off for the next three months does end today. But anyways, I was paying Jobber personally over 300 a month for the grow plan. And I didn't think twice about it. It was worth it for me because for 300 a month, not only do I look like a professional, but for that, it was almost 350 that I was paying for me, what that felt like was a customer acquisition slash customer loyalty cost, as well as 
those itemized estimates that you can't do unless you have the grow plan where you can't have each line item clickable to approve or deny, which these homeowners eat up. They love it. It grows my, some of my estimates double, double. I'll do a $400 estimate and it'll be $400 for their line items. And I'll add $400 of other stuff I found and they'll approve the whole damn thing. And I just made another $400 on that same job. And that extra $400 didn't require me scheduling two other tenants and driving across town. For me, guys, when when we're talking something that comes out to single digit dollars per day in the end, $6 a day, $3 a day, whatever it is that you're on, whether it's marketing, whether it's the software you run your business with, whether it's uh, a vehicle, like say you just your truck looks so absolutely horrible that you can't show up at a homeowner's house in that truck and look respectable. You don't have to buy a new one, but if you need to pay $8 a day times 30 days out of the month, so $320 a month for a payment on a a 2015 Chevy whatever, if that's what you need to do to appear a legit business to be taken seriously and not be treated like just a handyman, those are small numbers, you know. I'm doing my business this year, I think overall through the whole year, and this includes materials, but it looks like we're going to break 350 this year, $350,000. That's not all labor. That's a lot of materials. That's also me sending work to other guys that are specialists at other things that I let them take care of, like my drywall guy. I don't ever texture drywall except for tiny little patches that I'm doing myself at a move out. When I get big, like plumber specials where the plumber removed the drywall, I send my drywall guy and he takes care of it. And that's another thing I have Jobber for, because I can just make that job and assign it to him on Jobber. But I don't even remember where I was going with all this now. Anyways. Anyways, oh, the 3% of the money. Yeah, so for me, these are all business expenses. When you're looking at a business that's doing $350,000 a year, or even if it's just going to be you, and you're not even trying to shoot for the moon like that, but you're still going to do... You know, you're going to do 150 a year if you're busy and you're charging anything decent. So to worry about the $200 a month to pay for job or the 3%, if you can find a better deal, definitely do. But don't forget, those numbers are not really very big in exchange for what you get for them. That's kind of the thinking of like, uh, I need my money today instead of I need to grow a long term business that's going to grow organically and provide generational wealth and security for my family. That's that's how I view it when I'm paying for things like that. Next. Kfiend22 said, I need a one-on-one -on -one with you. Got some handyman business questions. Yeah, uh, bulletproofhandymanbusiness at gmail.com. I promise y'all, when I say this, I mean it. Bulletproofhandymanbusiness at gmail.com. Any questions you have, if it's three pages that you need to type out to me to let me know all of your situation and ask me for some advice, I always reply to everybody. It may be a week. It may be a week and a half. If I feel really bad if it's two weeks, but you never know. I am busy. But I reply to everybody every single time. Whatever y'all have issues with, send me an email, and I will give you the best answer that I can give, or I'll give you no answer if I don't feel qualified. I'm not going to make up an answer either. But just go ahead and email me. Beanpatch said, okay, thanks for being in touch. Chuck said, I was going to save that for another time. Paul, hey, what's up, Paul? How you doing, sir? Paul's boy is going to be serving in the Air Force here in Tucson. And when he comes to visit his boy, me and Paul are going to go have a beer and some tacos. Pittsburgh Toddy 86 said, I've recently added relatively inexpensive music streaming devices to the old stereo systems around my home. You can stream music to one or all of the systems. Sonos is expensive and popular. Let's see. Is that just like in relation to that? Actually, you know what? I've, I wanted to do that to my house, and you may be able to tell me like where to look for the components I need. I want in my house like a central server somewhere that has all my music on it and that I can just, of course, Bluetooth or Wi-Fi have the music downloaded on the server. But I want a central location in every room, and I mean high quality speakers in every room, like Sony or better style speakers. I know Sony's probably not the thing anymore, but I'm I'm 42. When I was in my 20s and I cared about music, Sony 
was, you know, Sony and JBL. Those were the two. Um, but anyways, yeah, let me email me if you can, unless you say it while I'm still on here. But I actually want to get speakers in all my rooms and I want them to be to where me or my wife can control them with our phones. Uh, let's see. Pittsburgh Toddy 86 is, <clears throat> is this a potential moneymaker as replacement for Sonos? I don't, I don't know, man. I think I probably just don't know what Sonos is for the most part. I kind of see what you're saying. I, I just don't have a good answer, sir. I apologize. I just don't have a good answer for you, and I don't want to make one up. Paul said he uses a Plex media server. My buddy Chris, my best friend in the entire world, Chris. Uh, I couldn't have started this business without him, to tell you the truth. he's He's been... He's been there for me for a few decades now. He uses a Plex media server also. Paul said, Plex is pretty good. There's an open source alternative that's supposedly pretty good too. Can't remember the name right now. Chuck said, Sonos is definitely worth it. Yeah, y'all are all speaking gibberish to me for the most part because I just don't know what Sonos... I'm going to assume that's a speaker brand. But... It looks like we have been in here for an hour and 20 minutes, and I promised my wife this was going to be a short one. So I'm going to take the opportunity with a lull in the chat and everything to say goodbye to y'all and to remind everybody one more time, um, this particular video here, please, anything you think of AI related in terms of, <clears throat> of threats from AI to our businesses, not like existential threats. Just anything that you think AI might have an effect on us, any ways that we can utilize AI, let this the comment section here be the place to start discussing all of that. And then also, just as always, you know, like, subscribe, share. If you find value in what I'm giving you, because I'm making sure that y'all don't ever pay for it, I'm getting Jobber to pay for it. I'm going to try to get other people to pay for it. Y'all don't have to pay for it. But if you find some value and you want to help out, Please take just a moment to subscribe, share, comment. Any interaction at all that you do with my posts and my videos is going to help me out. It's going to bring sponsors. It's going to open up more time and resources for me. So more of this for y'all, which I selfishly, honestly, I like doing it. It's a selfish thing. I want to do more and more of this. I really enjoy it. Yeah, everybody have a good night. And uh, Pittsburgh Toddy said I'm going to send you more information. Cool. All right. Well, I hope you guys are out there killing it and I'll see you all on the next one.